So I want to ask you a question about yourself. Maybe tough, maybe not so tough. Who are you? Uh, did you hear me? Who are you? Now, that may be tough to answer because when we ask people that question, they usually say, um, I'm a pastor, uh, I'm a mom, I'm a dad. That's not what I'm asking. Who are you? You see, you've got to go a little deeper if you want to know who you really are. I came to Canada in 2007. And for the first three or four months, it was great meeting new people. What I soon realized after about three or four months is that the questions remain the same over and over and over again. People start off by saying, wow, you speak a little funny. Where are you from? Guess what the next question is? What do you do? I want you to know that that question is not helpful if you really want to know who you are. What you do is not important. You see, in our society today, we seem to grade people according to what job they do. I know some people who are doctors, lawyers, politicians, pretty important people in society, but their character is not so good. People I wouldn't want to be friends with. Then I know some other people who maybe are stay-at-home mom, somebody who works at Timmy's, somebody who pumps gas, and they have an awesome character. People I want to be friends with. You see, your job has nothing to do with who you are inside. When we're speaking about who are you, we're speaking about your identity. So here's the thing. If you want to discover who you are, I have a simple exercise that might help you uncover some of who you are. This exercise has been tremendously helpful to me in my personal walk. Grab yourself a piece of paper if you can and a pen. Grab your iPad, your computer, and do this exercise with me. I want you to write on the top of the page your name with an apostrophe S, B-list, B-E. So Wayne's B-list. This is opposed to a do list. You know, we have do list things that we have to do. Uh, we are human beings and not human doers. And when we speak about being, we're speaking about character traits that we have inside of us that make us who we are. So begin with five adjectives, five descriptive words that would describe you on your best day. Now think about what your kids may say about you, what your friends, what your mom and dad, what your family might say about you on your best day. Five characteristics, write them down. Now that may take a few minutes. Don't ask anyone. This needs to come from inside of you. After you've done those five descriptive words on your best day, go a little lower and think about two or three characteristics that you do possess. These character traits do come out of you, but it takes a little more effort. You've got to be intentional about it in order for it to occur. It takes work. You got that? Three characteristics that I do possess, these do show up, but it's with effort. I have to be intentional about it. And then right at the bottom, would you think about one character trait that God may be drawing out of you? One character trait that God's been trying to get out of you in your recent past. We've attached an exercise to this video. Would you pause it now to do that exercise? So thank you for doing that exercise. I want you to sit down with your spouse for a minute and just have a look at that list that you've drawn up. And tell me what do you see? I think what you would see there are two awesome people. You know, two people that we say we could really trust with a marriage. Two people that are not just random, but really people that are designed by God to be those people on that list. We believe that those character traits were put inside of you when God created you. You see, when God created you, He designed you to be that kind of a person. And this is not all of who you are. This is just a slither of who you are. There's so much more 
to be discovered. When you look at those top five character traits, that's the stuff that people see often. That's the fruit bearing stuff. That's almost like the fruit on the tree. The next little section of the, the stuff that you have to work on, those are like little seedling trees that are still developing and haven't yet borne fruit in your life. And the stuff at the bottom that God's trying to draw out of you, those are seeds. If you did this exercise five years down the line, maybe the seeds would be fruit bearing and maybe there'd be some new seeds in there. You are in the development process of becoming who you are. Now, those two people we could really trust with the marriage. Why? Because we believe that when God created you, He created you on purpose for a purpose. You are not random. God sat down sometime in eternity past, and He thought about the person that He's going to make, and He had plans for why He was making you. Can you imagine that? That Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sat down, and they made Clint. They said, I'm going to put these things inside of him so that he can have an impact in this world. Wow. And I'm guessing that after they made you, they may have called all the angels and said, come and have a look at this guy. And they called out all your character traits and they said, wow, isn't he amazing? That's our Clint. And he's going to do great things for us. So if you were designed by God on purpose to be that person, it only makes sense to me that when you live out your life according to your design, your life's going to go way smoother. Why do I say that? You know, take a hammer. Could I cut wood with a hammer? I probably could. It's going to be messy, but I could cut the wood. Could I drive a nail in with a saw? Sure I could. Maybe after about 30 hits I might hit the nail once, probably get the nail in by tomorrow. But you see, when you use a hammer for what it was designed for and a saw for what it was designed for, the job's way easier. When you live out according to your design, your life's probably going to go smoother. When you show up as the person on that list, you are being a man and woman of integrity. You see, we see over and over and over again couples coming to our retreats where they have lost themselves. They've lost that person on the B list. They've become what we call compromised. If you look at the wall of a dam, it has one side that holds back the water and the other side of the wall should really be dry. If the engineers go out and inspect the dam and they find that water is leaking out on the side that should be dry, what would they say? They would say, the dam has been compromised. Are you compromised at the moment? Are you showing up as that person on your B-list? We want to call you back to being that man and that woman of integrity. Mm -hmm.